chapter three, which actually sampling and reconstruction. So simply the meaning is what? The, let's assume that I'm having a continuous time signal. Here I need to use a sampling and hold device. In order to reconstruct the signal, I will call it E dash of T. Now, the meaning if I'm having E of T here, the sampler ideally is represented by a switch, and this switch is closed and opened by certain T, which is the switching uh, sampling build or switching frequency. Let's this is the sampling. Uh, period. Now, this signal, this signal is continuous time signal, correct? Now, the sampler actually is the process to convert the continuous time signal to a discrete. So, simply this means that instead of T, put what? K, T, or K. Now, this one is discrete. Discrete, actually. Now, after processing, the plant is actually what? Continuous. So I need to reconstruct the signal. So I need to reconstruct the signal. So I need here to, to have a hold device or hold circuit. Now, the input to the hold circuit is discrete. So the output will be what? Continuous. I will call it E dash of T. Of course, what I need to generate E of T. This is the ideal case. But sometimes it will not equal ideal T to E of T. So that's why I give it, let's say, dash for it. Now, the same thing here. If I'm using Laplace, this will be E of S. This will be E star of S. And this will be E dash of S. Sometime here we call it the star. Signal. So here I'm having what? Continuous, discrete, whole device, and the whole device will convert the signal to what? Continuous. Continuous. So now, this one actually, physically, is the analog to digital converter. The analog to digital converter. So this actually, the sampler, is ideal representation for what? Analog. For the analog to digital converter. So this is the analog to digital converter. And this one here, the whole device, is actually a representation for what? For DAC, the digital to analog converter, for the DAC. So here the DAC is what? Is the digital to analog converter. Yep. Yes, good. Now, let's Assume we are taking a simple example before proceeding. Let's assume I'm having the, the following signal. And this signal in time domain. So this T, and this is, let's say, E of T. Let's assume the signal is something like this. Now, the sampler actually, ideally I can represent it as a train of impulse function. Why? Because if the switch is closed, I can see 
label if the switch is open I cannot see it anymore. So it's like I'm multiplying the signal by what? A train of impulse, correct? By a train of impulse. So let's assume this T and this is delta of T. So simply, I'm sampling at certain T. So this will be the zero. This will be the T, correct? This will be the two T. And this will be the three T. And this will be the four T and so on, correct? Yep. Now, what I can see at this point, I can see this point, correct? Here I can see this point. Here I can see this point. Here I can see this point. Let us assume that those points that I can see why I'm doing what? The sampling. So now if I'm plotting T with respect to E star of T, or let's say K with respect to E star of T, which is E of K, so here what I can see, I can see this point, 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 and this point, correct? Let's assume this one. Now, until here, this is a continuous, this is a discrete. Now, this is what the process of, of the analog digital converter on the side. So for the two people that can be correct, it will be one. What? So, which means that you only see the signal at T. You only see the signal by, oh, at what? At T. If delta has other amplitude than one, then this means that I'm accumulating the signal or I'm amplifying. So now, will come the hold circuit. The hold circuit. Now, simply, what information I'm having? The only information I'm having is the value at what? At t, at two t, at three t, at four t. In between, I have any information? No. No. So similarly, this means that at k t, I'm having the value, which means that e of k t is given. Correct? Now. Between any tau greater than zero, less than t, I don't have any value. So now I need to reconstruct the signal. I need to rebuild the signal. So someone will say, hold the signal until you are getting the new sample. This is what we call the zero for the hold. This is what we call the zero. The mean. And I will use the red for that. Now, at this point, I'm having the value. Yes. So I will hold it until I'm reaching T. At the same amplitude. Right? Ah, I'm hold it until I'm reaching T. Now, at T, I know the, the, the sample. Yes, I know it. It will be this one, huh? Yes? yes. Then I will hold it until I'm reaching what? Next. The next T. Then I will hold it until I'm reaching what? The next T. Then I'm holding it until I'm reaching what? Then I'm holding at until what? The next T. Then I'm holding until I'm reaching the next Correct? So now this will be what? T reconstructed of T. If I compare it to the actual signal, this will be the actual signal, correct? It's not equal, but it's close. So someone will say, if I'm sampling at high rates, then I will get closer and closer. Correct? Yeah? Think, uh, this one possible scenario. Yeah. So now the question that we must answer, how much sampling rate is sufficient to reconstruct the signal? Correct? For example, if I'm taking here well, doesn't really, I can reconstruct the signal. What about I'm taking zero and here t? 
which means this scenario. Let's assume that I'm sampling in slow rate. Let's assume that so I'm sampling here, then here, then here. What option I'm having? This point and this point and this point. Yes. Yeah. So now let's hold it. There's no relation. Yeah. You see, there is no relation between the reconstructed signal and the actual signal. So, Good. Question. Now the answer is from Nyquist. Nyquist said that if you need to completely reconstruct a signal, you must sample at a rate faster than twice the maximum frequency in the system. This one, the night. So this is what we call the sampling theorem. So here, let's write. As we are getting the same integration method, like I'm doing so many sections to get the same original uh, function. Then it, yeah, it can be like trapezoidal method, for example, if you are slicing uh, the curve as narrow as you can, you can get the perfect, uh, let's say, integration, the, the, the perfect volume. Otherwise, you are doing an approximation. It's the same. So here, actually, as you can see, I'm using one of the simplest and the most common hold circuit, which we call zero on the hold. Later on, mathematically, I will drive. What the meaning of the zero on the hold? I'm holding the sample until I'm receiving the next sample. It can be seen as maintaining the third case and maintaining the previous value until the next value is coming. Correct? Now, if you notice here, at this rate of sampling, almost I can capture the signal. But if I'm sampling at slow rate, simply I cannot reconstruct the signal. So I must discuss how much the sampling or what the relation between the switching sampling or the sampling period or the sampling frequency and the spectrum of the signal, the maximum frequency in the signal. And this actually is the sampling uh, theorem. Now, in the sampling theorem, it said that the signal which is E of T, let's say, can be completely reconstructed from E of K or E star of T, which is the sample, this one, the points, if and only if, this we read it if and only if, yeah, it's shortcut for if and only if, the omega s is greater than or equal omega 2 omega max, where omega s is equal to pi f s, and T is equal one over FS is the angular switching or sampling, let's say here I will call sampling frequency. And omega max is the maximum frequency in E of T. You know that E of T can has different frequencies, correct? It can be a combination of sine and cosine, each has its own frequency. So simply I will go where to locate the maximum frequency 
then my sampling rate must be faster at least twice the maximum signal or the fastest signal in the, in the reconstructed signal. How does that affect the original integral of the function? I mean, the property will change. The now, the sampling theorem state one, if you need to completely reconstruct a signal, you need to sample at a rate at least twice time faster than the fastest signal in the signal. E of t is not changing, by the way. E of t is physical. E of t is this one. E of t is actual signal. Yeah. Now, what I'm doing in the first case, I'm doing discretization, which means that I'm converting the actual continuous signal into a train of pulses using what? The sampler. Now, this sampler, why are you doing that? Because the computer only understands that. After that, I'm integrating. I'm doing my calculation. Now I need to inject what the signal that I calculate based on the sample, the three of the sample. This one must be what? Deconstructed. Why? Because now I need to inject it to a physical system. And this system accepts analog signal. So I need to reconstruct. So we say that the sample is actually an ideal representation for what? For the analog digital converter. I'm converting, so sampling actually is what is the process of converting continuous time signal into what discrete time Now, in the opposite, the whole circuit is a representation for what? For that digital to analog converter. So the whole circuit is the process of what? Of converting discrete time signal into what? Into analog or continuous signal. And uh, hoping that the constructed signal equal to the actual signal. But there is a mismatch. And one of that was what? The sampling rate that I'm discussing now. How much I can go to the sand? I got the whole process actually, but if, we, if I just want to, to, to inject a signal into a device like a computer or digital device, check, it's working on a frequency like 50 or 60 hertz. No, 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 the sampling rate has no relation with the fundamental frequency. The sampling rate, actually, I must go roughly speaking. If I have a signal with a fundamental frequency 50, I must go with 100. In order to what? In order to not missing the information. Otherwise, I'm missing the information. For example, here, you see this one? Yeah. Now, if I'm sampling at slow rate, I'm having this point, this point, and this point only. So this means that the computer will receive this point, try to process, and inject the output. After that, it will wait. Nothing like that. So this will get what lag, missing of information. It will cause destabilization to the system. So the idea is what to try to reconstruct the signal, which means that I, I will try to minimize the loss of information. Of course, someone will say the number of words you are using will affect your accuracy. If I'm using 8 bits, I have accuracy less than if I'm using 20 bits. So, this actually is also what, some kind of error. In the end of the day, I will have error. Yes. So, now the important key factor here is the sampling frequency. So, the discretization doesn't have any work on the frequency, on the, the main frequency of the whole circuit, right? It has a relation. I'm telling you that. The switching frequency must be at least twice faster than the first signal. Yes? Which means? The means. Now imagine that uh, this is uh, a signal E of T or X of T, whatever you call it is equal to uh, sine uh, 100 uh, pi t uh, plus 7, for example, um, cosine uh, 20 uh, pi t. And I need to sample it. I need what to sample it, then hold it. Huh? Then hold. This only to what? To highlight the sampling and the hold. At the end of the day, between those, I'm having the computer. Yeah? But the concept are the same. I will assume my computer is unity game. Yes. Yeah. It's process of N, 
up. Good. So now let's see. Here I'm having two frequencies, not one. Yes. The first signal has a frequency equal to what? One by one omega by omega one. It is one hundred by omega, and the second one is twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. So simply, this means that here I'm having omega one is equal to uh, this one hundred. Yeah. So this would be 100 pi. So from here, the frequency f1 is equal to what? You know, it's omega 1 over 2 pi. So this will equal to what? 50 hertz. What about the second one? Omega 2 is equal to what? 20 pi. So f2 is equal to what? 10 hertz. Now here I'm having two frequencies. Which one is the fastest? So f max now is equal to what? So f max is equal 100 hertz. So according to Nyquist or the sampling theorem, f of the sampling must be at least greater than or equal to f max, which is equal to 200 hertz. So simply, this means that if I'm sampling at 200 hertz, I'm reconstructing the signal. If I'm sampling at 300, I reconstruct the signal with this. Yes. If I'm sampling at 2000, I can do that. Good. But what about if I'm sampling at 100 hertz? That matters 100 or 50. 50 to 100. Right? That's the same. Just change to. Yeah, let's make this one too. And now this will become what? Mm -hmm. One. One. Yeah. The concept. Yeah. The concept. Yeah. I mean, the concept. I don't care about that. Eh, hey, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So now, what about if I'm standing at frequency less than two? I'm losing information. I'm losing information. Which one? The fastest information. This one, I can have it. Absolutely. But this one, why? Because this one still, I'm sampling at frequency right. higher than the frequency, but I'm losing some information. Mm -hmm. Good? So let's take a numerical example highlighting the meaning of this one. Which I don't believe it's higher than frequency maximum. Now, in general, in general, after I just in general, all the limits I'm having minimum and maximum. Here, the most important one that decides the reconstruction of the signal is the minimum frequency, which is what FS must be greater than or equal to F max. Now, someone will say, can I go faster? Yes, you can go faster. What will limit us to go faster? The first thing, the capability of the LLP is the converter. In the end of the day, you have LLP is a converter that is sampling at certain sample rate. So if you go to any, uh, let's say, uh, store and ask me about uh, LLP is a converter, you call it LLP is a converter. The first thing you ask you, uh, the number of the bits, eight, 12, 10, 5, 4, how much? The second thing, the sampling, the maximum frequency that you need to operate. Mm -hmm. So according to that, you are fixed. This is the first thing. Correct? Yeah. Now, later on, I will make a recommendation that in general, we are recommend to sample between 5 to 10 the maximum frequency. Good. Now, what about if I go to gigahertz? Now, if you can go to gigahertz, this means that you are perfectly capturing the, not only the signal, with the noise. Yeah? But simply, the first thing, the hardware maybe cannot support. The second thing, your processor actually, your processor, would take more than time. Yeah, so simply this means that your processor are taking sampling, each three samples 
or for sandals of ABC. So similarly, you are missing for. Expensive, checking out. It's very, very expensive also. So if the frequency is given this means that the switch is obvious, it's continuous. It's continuous. And that's why I'm telling you that if I'm going to bigger here, okay. I can capture not only the signal, the nose of the signal. Yes? Even well, the measurement nodes. And now, by the way, this is tricky because according to your screen, you can distinguish. So simply, if your screen is this than, let's say, 60 inch, you can you cannot distinguish between 4K or full HD or HD. Yeah. If you need to distinguish, you need larger screen. Otherwise, you cannot distinguish. Or you have to be so close. You can't distinguish. You can't. Okay. Good. Okay. That's all. Uh, we go. Uh, we go for the base of two max. Okay. This is like this. Okay. What, what if we go to 1.5 that means? Okay, so let, let, let us give example. I will sample a signal at perfect sampling, which means that at the equality. Then I will sample the signal at higher sampling rate, and I will sample the signal at lower sampling rate and see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the short answer, he told you that you are missing information. You are missing on information. So I'm missing information. Now, let's see mathematically. It's just numerical examples, yeah? So now, let's... start with a simple example. And let's say... given here a certain signal that E of T is equal to uh, cosine a 20 pi t plus cosine let's say 100 pi t the first thing i need to find yeah let's say e star of t at a frequency fs equal uh, that's 200 hertz and 100 hertz and 70 hertz so here i will try to sample the signal at three different sampling rate 200 170 and then I need to reconstruct the signal. Then reconstruct the signal. So the first thing here, let's find omega one and omega two. So Omega 1 here will equal to 20 pi. So from here, F1 is equal to what? 10 here. And Omega 2 is equal to 100 pi. So from here, F2 will equal, you know, Omega over 2 pi. So this will be 50 hertz. So according to the sampling theorem, then Fs must be greater or equal to F max, which will equal to what? 100. So similarly, this means that I'm sampling at a rate higher than the, the sampling rate I need. And also I'm sampling at the perfect, the equality. Then I'm sampling at what frequency? This So I'm using over sampling, equal sampling, and other sampling. Yes. So now let's try to solve it for Fs is equal to 200 hertz. So from here T will equal what? 
1 over f, which will equal 1 over 200 second. Correct? Now, if I need to find e of k, simply I will say that it will equal to e of t, such that t is equal kt, correct? So simply now, e of k will equal cosine 20 pi instead of t, I will put what? k t plus cosine 100 pi k t. And now t equal to what? 1 over 200. So this will equal cosine 20 pi k over 200 plus cosine 100 pi k over 200. And simply, if I solve this one, this will equal to what? Cosine pi k over 10 yeah, plus cosine pi k over. So simply, this is what the sampling. Now, if I need to reconstruct the signal, which means that I need to calculate E dash of T. So reconstructing is actually, instead of K, I will use T over T K. Yep. And if I do so, E star of T will equal Cosine pi t over 10 multiplied by uh, 1 over 200, so this would be 200, yeah? plus cosine 200 pi t over 2, and this actually will equal cosine 20 pi t plus cosine 100 pi t, which actually the same thing. This is actually is equal to what? E of t, correct? Without losing any information. Now, let's discuss f as equal to 70. Yes. The minimum, less than the sampling rate. The sampling rate is 100. Let, let's discuss what? The less than this one. So now here T is equal one over seventy second. And again, if I need to calculate E of K, this will equal cosine of 20 pi K over 70 plus cosine 100 pi K over 70. Now, this one will equal cosine 2 pi K over 7. Yep. Plus cosine 10 pi k over 7. Now, this one, you know that the cosine is periodic. If I'm having 2 pi, it will repeat itself. And this one discrete, huh? So now, this one here, so 10 pi k over 7 will equal 2 pi k minus 4 pi k over 7, correct? This will equal to what? 14, 14 over 7, so minus 4, it will equal this one, correct? So now, this will equal to cosine 2 pi k over 7 plus 
cosine 2 pi k minus 4 pi k over 7. Now, you know that cosine of 2 pi k minus theta is actually equal to cosine theta. To repeat it. So now, this will equal to what? Cosine 2 pi k over 7 plus cosine, and you know that cosine of minus theta is equal to cosine of theta. Yeah? So this will be equal to 4 pi k over 7. So now this is what? The start, the sum. Now I need to reconstruct it. I need to reconstruct what? So simply, I will say that k is equal to t over t k. Yep. So E reconstructed of t will E. Now here I'm having cosine 2 pi, instead of this will be t over 7, and I'll multiply here by 1 over t, which is 7 t, correct? Plus cosine 4 pi t multiplied by 70 over 7. Now, this will equal to what? The first one here is what? Cosine a 20 pi t. This is the, the signal which is go slower than the sound. I can reconstruct it without losing information. But the second signal which was running at frequency 50 hertz, now I'm missing the signal. Yeah. So the second one here plus cosine 40 pi t. Yeah. So this one reconstructed. If I recall, E of T was equal to what? Cosine 20 pi of T plus cosine 100 pi of T, correct? But simply here, I'm having what? Loss of information. Loss of information. One of that is what? Here, the frequency is what? 20. Hmm? So simply this means that I reconstruct a signal with different frequency. Correct? But any signal, any signal that it has a frequency less than twice yeah, the sampling, I can reconstruct. So now this is an example. Simply, it's up to you to go and uh, solve for fs is equal to 100. You can reconstruct the signal. So now this is an example to highlight the meaning of the reconstruction and the meaning of the sampling in theory, and the meaning of fs must be at least twice the fastest uh, signal in the system. Understood? Let's take another example. So, so, so you are missing information, you can give anything. Yes? Why? Because if you are missing at second digits, if I'm having a wall, eight bit, and I'm missing the third bit or the first bit, can you reconstruct this? Thing? So this is the, the, the line, which means that in the end of the day, you can find there's a margin of the frequency that is clear. You can see it. Yeah? But the meaning here is what if I'm sampling at a rate which is not higher that twice the fast signal I'm losing what certain information. Those information I will list from where? From the fastest signal. Huh? Another thing. Actually don't know the input. If you don't know, you are measuring the input and feed it to computer to process it. Yes, you are measuring the signal. And after measuring the signal, you are attaching this information to it, to the computer. 
So actually, you don't know exactly the value. Let's take another uh, example. Let's see which one here I will take. Ah. Let's take the following example. Now imagine that you have a signal x of t, which equal to uh, 2 sine uh, 50 pi t multiplied by cosine 50 pi t plus cosine 60 pi t multiplied by cosine of 20 pi t, I need to find the minimum sample rate. Find the minimum sample rate. The meaning is what fs will equal 2 f max, correct? This is the minimum of the minimum sample rate. Hmm. So, first I have to multiply and get the frequency for what? Uh, Anas. Anas? Should we do it? Ah, well, Anas. Should we say it? Let's talk about frequencies, yes? So, similarly, those are what multiply signal. So, I need to inform the, the frequency. Now, you know that 2 sine theta cosine theta, and this would equal to what? The sine two theta. Sine 2 theta. So they have the same theta. The same the frequency. Two, uh, yep. So simply, the first thing I, I need to uniform in order to find it. So uh, we know that uh, sine 2 sine theta or cosine theta will equal to uh, sine 105. Sine, let's say, which is the 2 theta, mm. 2 theta. So simply this means that here I'm having what? Omega will equal to what? 100 mm. pi. pi, 100 pi. So this will give me the frequency here equal to what? 50. 50. Mm. No, just a minute. Now what about this one? Uh, first we have to... Uh, Adding them and then we have subtract that. Yeah, so this means so that I will I will go to two uh, cosine uh, theta uh, uh, sine uh, cosine beta uh, is equal to uh, cosine theta minus beta plus uh, cosine theta plus beta. Correct. So here I will have two frequencies. The first one is the subtraction in between, which is the 40 pi. And the second one is what? Is 80 pi, correct? So the frequency here equal to what? This is F2, let's say, omega 2, and this is omega 3. So this one, 50, yeah? Yes. So Fs should equal to what? 100 hertz. Good. Good. Okay. Do you have any question until here? No? Okay. So now... Hmm? Wait. Now here I'm, I'm looking for the frequency. I don't care about the, the game. Huh? I'm searching here for what? For the frequency. Because here is 2, so I should multiply by 1 over 2. Yeah? It's 2 sign. Simply here I'm searching for what? For the frequencies, not the amplitude. 
So only I need to calculate theta minus theta and theta plus theta, mm -hmm. which is 40 tau and 80, okay. 40 pi and 80 pi. So the maximum is 100 pi. Mm -hmm. So from here, I can get the frequency, the maximum frequency. So the minimum sample rate will be 100 hertz. Good. Good. So now let's return back and mathematically uh, drive uh, the whole circuit. So, as we said that, now what I, I'm trying to discuss the whole circuit after finishing the, the sampling. Now, as we said before, when I'm sampling a signal, I know only the value at certain time. Yes? So simply in between the sampling, it can take any polynomial. I can assume it taking any polynomial, good? So, I'm assuming that between the sample, I can represent the signal as H of KT plus tau, which will equal to AN tau to the power N plus AN minus 1 tau N minus 1 until I'm reaching plus A1 tau plus A of 0. So this is, will be called the nth of the whole circuit. So if n is equal to zero, in this case, I'm having what? H of k t plus tau is equal to what? A of zero. So this will call what? The zero order whole. If n is equal to one, then h of k tau plus tau is equal to what? a1 tau plus a0. So this would call what? First order whole set. Sorry. The most common one is the zero and the, the first. Can I go to the second? Yes, I can go to the second. That's not normal. So only I will discuss here the two cases. The first one, which is the, the zero order whole. which means that n is equal to zero. And I will end up with h of k tau plus tau is equal to what? A naught, correct? Now tau here is greater than zero, less than t, which means that between the period, between the sample, correct? Between here and here, between here and here, yes? Yeah. Okay, so now at tau equal to zero, H of k tau is equal to what? When tau is equal to zero. H of kt is equal a zero, correct? And this will equal x of kt. Why? The value at, at the sample. I know. Yes? Now, between tau greater than zero, less than t character, I'm fixing the value. So this is the zero order. Yes? I'm fixing the value. So I will return back and replot one, the zero order hold. Correct? I'm holding what? The value until the next sample is coming. So this is the most simple hold device. This is the most simple hold device in which I'm holding the sample until I'm, I'm reaching the, the next sample. Correct? Now, let's discuss the transfer function of this zero order hold.
Now, if I need to represent H of T, this will equal to what? Let's split here one. Let's assume that this is a signal. It has the the following hold. So this is the T E reconstructed of K T. So now the signal will equal to the first thing is X of zero multiplied by U of T minus U of T minus T. Correct? Yeah. This is the first part. Then what I have X of one multiplied by U of T minus T minus U of T minus T minus two. Good. Step like I'm I'm multiplying by what by pulse each uh, between two samples. So the second one will be plus X of T because K now is equal to one. I'm using K T. So this will be multiplied by U of T minus T minus U of T minus 2T. And this can continue X, for example, 2T. Multiply by what here? Who can help me? Let yes. U of T minus 2T minus U of T minus 3T. Correct? Yeah. And I can continue for forever for that. So simply this means that I can make it in compact form as summation from k equal to zero up to infinity x of k t multiplied by u of t minus k t minus u of t minus k plus one multiplied by t. Correct? Yes. Now, what I need now to take Laplace transform for this function. Now I need to calculate H of S, which will equal Laplace transform for the H of T. And simply, this will equal the summation from K equal to zero up to infinity x of k t those are constant huh? now this one is what this one is the expansion of minus k t s correct minus this is what expansion of minus k plus one t s over s because here i'm having what the pulse response correct now Ts is constant, correct? So I can get it out. So this will equal to one minus exponential minus T S over S, the summation from K equal to zero up to infinity X of K T exponential of minus K T S, correct? Just now, this is what? X star fast. This is what? X star fast. So simply this means that H of S will equal one minus exponential minus TS over S. And this one is X star of S. The meaning, if this is a sample, this is X of T, this will be x star of t. And I will write it in first. Now here I'm having whole circuit, and this will be what? The signal. Huh? This will be the h of t. In terms of s, this will be x of s. This will be the x star of s. This will be the 
the transfer function of the zero order hold, and this will be a h of s. So now who can give me the transfer function for the zero order hold equal to what? This is the output. This is the input. So this is the transfer function. This is the output. This is the input. So this is what? The transfer function. So here it will equal one minus exponential minus yeah. T S over right. S is the transfer function for the zero order hold. Good. Okay. Now, what about if I'm having first order hold? What about if I'm having first order? So now let's discuss the first order hold set. Now the first hold circuit from the name H of KT plus tau will equal to A1 tau plus A of zero, where tau is greater than zero less than t, correct? Mm. Yeah. Now, h of kt, when tau equals to zero, is equal to what? A naught, yes? And this will equal x of kt, correct? Why? At a sample, and I know the value. Good. <coughs> the mean? Tau equals zero? Yes. But of course. We are getting tau. More than zero and less than t. Just a minute. Now, if this is the value, and this is the value. This is the value here is t, and the oh. value here is 2t. Oh. Now, tau is, is going from t, from zero to t, correct? Mm -hmm. Whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm discussing whatever sample, huh? So when tau is equal to zero, I am on the sample, correct? So I know the value. So when tau is equal to zero, I'm having a. h of kt is equal to a naught, which is equal to x of k. So this is at what? Here, at tau is equal to zero. Now from the name, linear. If it's linear, I need two points to calculate the relation. Correct? Yes? Now, logically, what I'm having? I'm having the current sample, and I'm having what? The previous sample. I cannot pretend that I'm having the future. Now, what I'm having, I'm having the current sample and I'm having what? The previous sample. So let's assume that I will came back one step. What about if I'm just running the system? Then the value will equal to zero. Good? Yes? No point. Yeah, there's no point. And I'm assuming that the value is equal to zero. Yeah. Then the slope in between will be the relation. Okay. So now, at tau is equal to minus t, which means that I'm returning back one step. Let's assume here. Huh? Yeah. Turn back here. So now, h of kt plus tau will equal to a1 tau plus a naught at tau is equal to minus t. Yeah. So now, H of K minus 1 of T, I'm doing by 1, will equal to minus A1 T plus A naught. Now, A naught, I know it, huh? which is the X of KT. So now what the missing here is A1. I need to calculate what A1. So who can calculate A1 for me? So X of KT, I will rearrange it. Oh. Minus H of K minus, K minus 1 T over what? Over, over, T. T. over T. T. Now, this one here. 
the H K minus one T. Is it equal X of K minus one T? Yes, because what? The, the previous step. Good. Okay. So now, here I know A0 and I know A1. Graphically, this mean one. Let's try to, to plot it. Huh? Let's assume that I'm having the following signal, a discrete time signal, and I need to reconstruct it. So let's assume this is K, this is E of K. And let's assume here I'm having this point here. Uh, I'm having this point here. I'm having this point here. Uh, I'm having this point here. I'm having this point here and I'm having this point here. So those points at what? At the same, yeah? at T, at 2T, at 3T and so on. Now, so the first thing here, I will turn back to what? One, uh, to minus T. And this will be zero. Why? Because I'm assuming the system is causal. So there's nothing before start. So now let's see. I am where at t equals zero. I'm having this point. Yes? yes. And I'm having this point. Yes? So now, depending on that, I can plot what? A linear relation. Correct? Now, it's having to be maybe this than this. Let's let assume this one. Huh? Good. Now, I'm at this point, and I'm having this previous point. So this will be the signal. Until I'm reaching where? This point. Now, I'm having this point. The previous point is here. The slope will go this side. Until I'm reaching what? 3T. 3T, I'm having the value. Now I'm having this point and the previous point. I will draw the slope. Until I'm reaching what? The next, the next value. The same thing. I'm having this point and this point. I will draw the slope. Until I'm reaching this point, I'm having the value. So this is what we call the first order hole. The signal yeah. correct itself. Huh? The signal correct itself. Yeah, if the sampling is very close, it will correct itself. Actually, here, if you notice, I reach it. That's why I make it slightly up. Yeah? And here, I reach it. Yes. Yeah? That's why I make it slightly in order to say that sometimes I need to. Yep. But if the sampling is very high, I can, this will get more accurate than what? Than the first order. But mathematically, this one. Complex because if I need to design a circuit in order to achieve first order hold, it's complex. So now, is it worth it? I will say no. Most of the world is using zero order hold. Simply use zero order hold, increase the sampling rate, you can capture the signal. But sometimes we can use the uh, first order, this you can use, it will enhance the accuracy of the system. It will enhance. The accuracy of that's that. why you don't use the second order. yeah the second order or the third order or the nth order will add more accuracy but will add more complexity in the design now when i drive them as the, the, the laplace transform for this one to be complex that one was very simple one minus one minus three as over s yeah and remember i have a relation between z and expansion minus three s so automatically i have what I'm having 1 minus 0 minus 1 as it is that uh, uh, Z transform. Then I will put the S inside. So that's what uh, transform will be very simple. Okay. Okay. So now another example to tell you uh, the meaning also for the, in the first order hold. Let's assume that I'm sampling a unit sequence, a unit step sequence. Let's assume that I'm sampling a unit a step sequence. This is a T, this is U of K. Now you know that the sampling of the unit step sequence, it's nothing than the reading one at the sampling, correct? Yes? yes. So why I'm choosing the unit step? Because if I need to find a transfer function, then I will inject known input. Yes? Then I will 
calculate the output, then the transfer function will be the relation between the, the output and the Now, I need to reconstruct this one according to the first order hold. The first thing that I will do to return back to minus t, correct? Now, I am at t equal to zero, and I'm assuming that I know this value. So I will go and draw the slope until reaching what? The next step. Now, after that, this one and this one, the same line, correct? So it will be flat. This one and this one in the same line, it will be flat. This one and this one in the same line, it will be flat, correct? So this is what I'm having. So, if I need to represent this one as a function of time, so let's assume that I need to represent h of t. h of t equal to 1. The first thing, this actually is u of t, correct? u of t plus this one, correct? Yep. This one is what? This one is actually t over t, t, t over t capital, multiplied by a unit pulse response, this one, correct? Which is the u of t minus u of t minus t capital, correct? Yep. Okay. So now, in order to reconstruct the transfer function, here I will add and subtract the t u of t minus t capital. So I will add plus and subtract. So this means that h of t now can be written as 1 plus t over t capital u of t minus t minus t capital over the t capital u of t minus t minus u of t minus t capital. Those terms from where I'm adding t u and subtract. Yep. So now I will take H of S, which is the Laplace transform of H of T. This will equal to one. Now here U of T is one over S. Now T is one over S square, and you have T here. So this will be plus one over T S square. Those transform here. Okay. Then minus. Now, this one here with this one is the exponential. So, 1 minus T S square exponential minus T S. And finally, here I'm having 1 over S exponential minus T S. Now, let's collect the terms. Collecting the terms. Now, if I rearrange, this will equal to 1 minus exponential minus T S over S plus 1 minus exponential minus T S over T S squared. Yep. Now, we know that U star of S, because now I'm the whole circuit now, has an input, which is what? U star of T, correct? So U star of S, if you remember, which is Laplace, if U star of T, it was one over one minus Z minus one, and Z minus one, and Z is equal to expression minus T S, correct? So this will equal to one over one minus exponential minus T S, so now this is the H of T. So here is U star of S. Here is H of S. I need to calculate the, uh, the G for the first order hold. So
if I do so, the G of the first order hold will equal to 1 minus exponential minus TS over S all squared multiplied by TS plus 1 over G. So this is the transfer function for the first of the whole.